uh, hello Philip, welcome to London. Mm. Um, you're going to give a talk tonight in the House of Lords. Uh, perhaps you could give us a brief summary of the things you will talk about tonight. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the climate on climate change discussions in German politics and German public. And it's a really hot topic. Um, it's a very contentious topic um, with a lot of um, key players uh, from science, from politics, um, but also from industry. Um, and I will talk about how difficult it is uh, to have an unemotional discussion um, about doing um, changes in our energy system for various reasons. Um, and it's a, it's a really, uh, it's a really uh, important topic for German politics. I would say number two uh, of our, of our yes. uh, top three list. Interesting. When there were negotiations for a new coalition government a few months ago, um, with the Liberal Democrats and the Green Party and the Conservatives, you're a member of the Conservative Party. My understanding is that these negotiations failed partly because they couldn't agree on the future of the climate energy policy. Absolutely, because the underlying assumptions, uh, I believe, are wrong. So uh, we have the uh, underlying assumption that we need to... Uh, Uh, reduce carbon dioxide almost at all uh, costs. We have our uh, we had our own national goals um, being stricter than European goals. And I was one of the uh, persons in Parliament in the Conservative Party saying, "Well, we have to we have to dump these national goals. We will not be able to reach them. They are they don't make sense. Uh, Germany in isolation. I never completely understood that, but there was no way in. We kept them on paper." And I think during the negotiations, they were, especially the Green Party was saying, well, you have uh, st stuck to these uh, goals, so we have to achieve them. And that, need, that means we have to kill uh, coal. And the Liberals, um, they rightly said, well, we need, we need an energy mix. We need coal uh, to keep our energy supply stable and also to, to have manageable prices because the prices for this uh, renewable thing have gone through the roof um, because we have this special German law, the EEG, the Renewable Energy Law of Germany. It's a uh, uh, green um, left bill uh, inv invented by, uh, by the Social Democrats and the Green Party, especially the Green Party. But um, it has been so very, very successful because um, of a simple mechanism saying that if you buy, if you, if you build a windmill or a solar panel anywhere in Germany, regardless of whether that's, that's a good place or a bad place, whether that it's fully connected to the grid or not, you will get uh, um, uh, fixed conditions, uh, reimbursement, uh, and a 20 years guarantee. And guess what? People started building windmills and solar panels all over Germany. Um, on land, in the sea, everywhere. You drive out of Berlin, you see them light, left and right. It's, 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 it's been a, a tsunami. And the costs have also been, become a tsunami by now. Um, so it's uh, 25 billion euros every year paid by um, household, by private uh, consumers and by industry especially uh, a medium-sized industry, because we had to make some um, exceptions uh, for, for, for big industry, energy-intensive industry, because otherwise we would have lost them uh, to our neighboring countries or to other regions. Uh, so this is a system, um, I call it a, a plant economy, a plant wirtschaft, like we used to have back in, in the GDR, but it's actually a plant wirtschaft without being planned. So this is the worst of two worlds, I believe. Uh, because if you plan something, at least you have a plan. You said, well, we need 10,000 windmills here, 10,000 windmills uh, there. But, but we have a bill which says, just build it anywhere you like. 
And because we want to have as many uh, uh, windmills as possible, uh, we just reimburse it. That is madness, but I think. The government has now, uh, and the new coalition government, acknowledged that these targets, these goals, are not going to be achieved. Not officially, as I understand it. They, they are not pursuing them anymore, but they didn't kill them officially either. So it's like, we leave it open. So yesterday, the new economics and energy minister, Mr. Altma Altmaier, gave a speech to an international energy conference in Berlin, where he said the German energy transition, the Energiewende, will fail if it is not adopted globally. Well, it's, what? it's like stating the obvious. I mean, I, and what is the Energiewende? I mean, it's, it's the EEG, and I told you about this. Would any country uh, be uh, advised uh, to adopt this? No, no way, never. You, can, you cannot do that. So this, uh, this bill has failed already. It's very successful because uh, we have 10,000 of windmills in the country. We have, I think, what, 40% renewable energy if uh, wind and, uh, and, and sun is shining, even more. Uh, so a huge amount, but the costs have gone through the roof. Um, so this bill needs to go, and this will not be adapted by any other country, I'm, I'm sure. I, it would be crazy. Second thing, um, leave, uh, aiming to, um, to increase renewables to a sizable margin, but at the same time leaving nuclear, which has nothing to do with climate change, but uh, has other reasons, could be I will not discuss it, I will not question that, but just stating the obvious, that's not a strategy. That is simply doing two, two major tasks at the same time. Would you advise that any country to follow that, that route? No. Um, so you already have two pillars of the so-called Energiewende, which can never be implemented in any other country because they don't make sense mm. in the way they are set up. Um, so uh, we have to get away from the uh, um, EEG as soon as possible. That's number one. We have to rethink the, the, the targets and the strategy. That's number two. There needs to be a plan uh, on how we want to rebuild our uh, energy system. Um, nuclear is gone in Germany, it's no question, but this is nothing will, which will be translated to other countries uh, automatically. And I think uh, Altmaier also stated the obvious, we need coal for, for a considerable time being. I'm deeply convinced that we need conventional anyway. So I always said it's, it's, absolute, it's an illusion to, uh, to go for 90 or 95% renewables. This is, nobody has really um, uh, thought through the consequences uh, of, of, of such a such a strategy. Yes. I think this is this is wishful thinking, um, similar to the uh, to this aggressive CO two reduction uh, um, targets which we have now uh, failed but to the, achieve. The irony of the Energiewende is that it is astronomical in its costs. Mm -hmm. You said twenty five billion. billion euros per Some year. Think it's near to 30 billion or somewhere in increasing. There, increasing, but the CO2 emissions are not being reduced. Mm -hmm. So you pay an astronomical sum of money every year, or the ordinary households, families have mm -hmm. to pay that, but it's actually not delivering actual reduction. Yeah, and that, and that, that is the core question, and I, I, I questioned I question the underlying assumption about the CO2 uh, reduction. Um, I'm not a, a, a climate scientist uh, by training or, or by profession, um, but I think there are much more question marks um, to this concept uh, as being pushed or simplistically interpreted by uh, a, a number of stakeholders. Um, but that would be okay for me if, if there would be other good reasons for a certain strategy. And you hear that uh, occasionally as well. Of course, um, there are issues with, uh, with coal production and coal burning. So, and I would always say a, a strong energy system is, is a mix. So maybe 
there are good reasons to push uh, uh, renewables to a certain degree, but you have to have a clear strategy behind it. And I believe that, um, that those target setting, uh, the CO2 target setting is a flawed strategy and that we have to rethink where we actually want to go uh, uh, with, uh, with renewables in a mix, not putting all eggs into one basket. I would, I've never heard outside energy, everybody would say, you're crazy. If you, if you reduce your portfolio just to one candidate, to one type of energy, everybody would say, well, why would you do that? Um, well, in the energy sector, we've, we have a decade where everybody seemed to have thought that this is a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea. I think an, an, an a resilient, affordable uh, energy system needs to have several sources, needs to have redundancy um, for strategic, for all sorts of reasons. So we have to rethink our strategy, reset our goals, um, and I'm sure that this will be considerably different uh, from the current uh, targets and the CO2 thing is something uh, which we have to scrutinize very very carefully because um, under the pretext of saving CO2 uh, there have been so many uh, bad economic and political measures which have been so costly and have uh, put money into individual pockets uh, on, uh, on behalf of the society mm -hmm. um, I think that has to that has to be put up um, uh, for a revision. So it would appear that after about 25, 30 years of a nearly all party consensus on climate energy policy in Germany, this consensus is now breaking up. It yeah. would appear uh, that at least on the center right parts of the social Uh, the, the Christian Democrats and parts of the kind of populist movement and parties, there is growing opposition to the conventional energy policy. How do you think this, given that we have a coalition government between the Christian Democrats and the Social Democrats, and the Social Democrats, although they are a small party, they are much greener now than they used to be. How do you think this can actually happen? How do you think you can reform a policy that is so ingrained for so long and where people are almost hysterical about it? Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult task, but it starts uh, with, uh, with reminding ourselves of our core values. And the core value of democracy the core value of, um, of a market, uh, of a free market, of, of innovation, the core value of science is not consensus, it's competition. It's open discussion, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, an, it's, it's, it's a fight uh, for the better concept, um, uh, for the more successful strategy, and we have to get back to those core values. That's, that's, that will be my key theme tonight. Um, We don't need a consensus on the energy policy. We also don't need a consensus on climate uh, research. I don't believe there is a consensus. I believe that there are certain studies where they limited the number of persons uh, they are asking and uh, uh, ignored the vested interest and uh, some other uh, confounding factors and then created this concept of consensus. Um, no, democracy, science, and uh, a liberal um, market um, uh, strives on competition. So let's have a an, uh, an, uh, an, uh, discussion on what needs to be the consensus. And the consensus needs to be that we are having a triangle. And that's actually uh, what we are, we are all saying. Energy needs to be um, reliable, safe, affordable, and yes, We also want uh, to, to, to have it uh, ecological, but again, then we have to have a discussion. Any type of energy will have some downsides um, on the environment. Yeah? So to, to, to put this climate saving thing, which actually means CO2 reduction, which often is not even a CO2 reduction uh, above everything, is also a very questionable concept because you need... Um, you need Sometimes you need water, you need land, you, uh, uh, you, uh, you are interacting uh, with your bird population in case of windmills. You have all sorts of other topics 
Um, and very often it only turns out after a certain threshold has been passed for an individual type of energy, uh, what the real downsides are. So I think we are only at the beginning learning about the downsides of wind energy um, and of solar panels. I think we know it uh, with biomass already, uh, next to the pricing uh, topic, we already know that the land usage and other effects are very questionable. Um, but this is, this is ingrained in any type of energy uh, creation. And that's why my conviction is that we need to have a mixture. We have to have, we have, a, we have, to have a strategic discussion on where we want to go. But I certainly don't want to put all our all eggs in one basket, uh, everything on one type of energy, but rather have an informed discussion. And of course, price is a topic yes. and, uh, and ideology has reigned for too long uh, in this field. And we have to get back to, uh, to a democratic um, customer, voter oriented discussion of what is possible and what okay. is not possible. Um, of course, Mr. Altmaier is Angela Merkel's right hand man, perhaps the ministers closest to mm. her. What, how do you interpret the signals that he's sending out to the international community by saying, A, Germany is not going to uh, phase out coal, B, he also said, we are, expect to stop subsidizing renewables in the next four to five years, and C, in all likelihood, the energy vendor will be a failure. What, I mean, these are very strong signals he's sending out. Is this kind of the beginning of a serious reconsideration? I would think so. I think it's, it's overdue. Uh, it's absolutely overdue. Um, uh, we have to have, I mean, we are a land of engineers and uh, have for a lot of time ignored certain uh, basic, uh, uh, basic factors, I would say. We have been become a specialist in, in, in now managing uh, uh, windmill and, and solar uh, power. So we it is not all negative. We have we have gained a special expertise, but we also learned very hard lessons. I mean, um, again, 25 billion or 28, uh, 30 billion euro per year. These are mind-boggling uh, numbers, and, and even. Uh, and, a relatively well off society like Germany cannot sustain that in the long run. And we're already seeing uh, the downsides on, uh, on individual um, families, on certain industries. And, uh, and, and of course, uh, we cannot sustain that. We, we, we know that actually. So what, again, I think Peter Altmaier is doing, it's, he's stating the obvious. And if anybody has believed that, that, that this, that this, could work, then well, Germany shows the world that we have to rethink that. Philip, many thanks and good luck with your talk tonight. Thank you. <laughs>